I wanted to show you here at the Creation Museum, when you go through the flood geology exhibit, you'll also see a little side exhibit there on natural selection. And it has there uh, Darwin's finches, where they're actually replicas we made uh, to look just like uh, the Darwin's finches. Uh, and you'll notice that there are those with big beaks and little beaks and small beaks. This is used in public school textbooks and university textbooks as the classic evidence for evolution, Darwin's finches. Who remembers being taught that at school or university? Yeah, there's quite a number of hands there. Darwin's finches. By the way, what were they? Finches. What are they? Finches. What will they be? Finches. Is that evolution? No, that's just what? Finches. See, you're catching on. That's, that's very good. But people say, but look, they got big beaks, little beaks, medium-sized beaks. What did they have? Big beaks, little beaks, medium-sized beaks. What have they got? Big beaks, little beaks, medium-sized beaks. That's not evolution. Look around the world. Or look around the room. You've got big beaks, little beaks, <laughs> medium-sized beaks. Right? That's not, that's not evolution. Now, you've got different species of finches. God made the original kind of, of bird uh, that we'll call the finch kind, say, and with all the genetic diversity there, over time, as they moved away from each other, like the dogs, uh, some survived better with the bigger beaks over here, some survived better with little beaks over here. It's just variation within a kind from the genetic diversity that was already there. It's got nothing to do with evolution. Now, here's the interesting thing. The interesting thing you'll find is this, is that if you ask the average high school student, the average college student, university student, give me an example of evolution, give me an example of one kind changing into another, invariably they bring up the finches, because that's what they're indoctrinated with at school. Uh, and my good friend Ray Comfort, how many of you know Ray Comfort? A uh, number of you? Uh, my good friend Ray Comfort in California, he loves to go out and interview people and get on video. And he has a video called Evolution Versus God, which we have here at the, at the Creation Museum. But he interviewed some professors and students from secular universities in California. And I want you to hear his question to them and listen how they answer. When you say change of kinds, you mean the evolution of one species from another or to another. Yes, we have that in action actually in the Galapagos. Could you give me one instance? Yes, we have an example from a group of birds called Darwin's finches. And you take a look at the difference between the finches on the islands that all started out. I mean, that's very, very observable. But that's not Darwinian evolution. There's been no change of kinds. What did the finches become? They become genetically new and anatomically new, recognizably different species. So they're still finches? Well, of course they're still finches, yes. They're not a change of, there's no change of kind. Little birds that he, uh, that he had observed that... Oh, what did they become? Um, their beaks, their beak shapes. They're, they're still birds. birds. Yes, three finches that turn into different types of birds. Based they're still the finches. Beaks. Well, for example, Darwin and, and his study on evolution of the birds on the island that he went on to there. Their beaks changed? Their beaks. Uh, they're still birds. There's no change of kinds. That's within the kind. Evolution on the beaks. That's so that's called adaptation. It's not Darwinian evolution. There's no change of kinds. There's no different animal involved. Here's a sad thing. That's the state of where most of our students are at and our professors and teachers are at because they've been indoctrinated. That's evolution. Speciation is evolution. They use the word evolution for speciation. Evolution for, for uh, adaptation. But people, different species of finches has nothing to do with evolution. And you know what else is interesting? You think about this for a moment. right? You can, you can see that they're very, very similar. Have a look at these dog skulls, and we have these there uh, right beside uh, the finches over there in our exhibit. And you'll see here, we have a wolf here, and a coyote here, and here we have a chihuahua, it's one of those degenerate mutants, and <laughs> this one is a bulldog, it's a super degenerate mutant, okay? And look at the differences here. Imagine, imagine if you dug these up as fossils and they weren't alive today. What, what would you think if you did that? Because here's the interesting thing when you look at it. When you look at the Great Dane and the Yorkshire Terrier, okay, they're said to be the same species, because they're the domestic species, but, but they look so different. But the wolf and the coyote they look very similar, but they're different species when you look at this. There's actually greater diversity between these breeds than there is between these species. 
And the point that we're making out is all that genetic diversity was there uh, present originally and through artificial selection, us as humans determining which breeds with which, we can get that sort of difference in just a few hundred years, but evolutionists say this took thousands and thousands of years and takes a long time. And yet there's much more difference here. And you know what Darwin actually did? He, he used dog breeders in England as an example. Look, we can get all these differences because we breed dogs. And so in nature, it takes a long time when in actual fact, greater diversity from, from the, the domestic dogs here than there is here. So you see, people are just brainwashed into believing something that's not true, that one kind change into another, and that it takes millions of years to get different species. No, if you've got all the genetic diversity right there, and as animals move away from each other into different environments, speciation can happen rapidly. And there's many examples of that. And the, Dr. Nathaniel Jensen published a brand new book, I'll tell you later, uh, dealing with that. It's called Replacing Darwin. 